Patriots to extend Gerard Mayo will begin interviewing for an offensive coordinator. And it reads as follows. The New England Patriots and head coach Bill Belichick have begun contract extension discussions with Gerard Mayo that would keep him with the team long term. In addition, the team will be interviewing, will begin interviewing for offensive coordinator candidates beginning next week. That's it. That's the whole thing. Two sentences and nothing else. Uh, and to me, I thought that this was a bombshell. Honestly, I did. I thought that this In was a many layers of it. Wild, wild press release. Um, your uh, your initial reaction to when you saw this posted last night? First reaction was, "Wow, extend Gerard Mayo. Great, they got it done." And then you read it, and it says they have begun contract extension discussions with right. Gerard Mayo. You should say Patriots go, hope to extend Gerard. Yeah, Mayo. yeah. and so I go, "That's kind of weird." They're in the middle of negotiations, and they're just releasing a statement on they're negotiating. I mean, I guess they're trying to get a message out there that they're being proactive, but it seems a little premature. And then you get the, an update. I saw Karen Garigian at least confirm it, that he is that Drod Mayo is not interviewing for the defensive coordinator job with the Browns. I didn't see any update on the Panthers. Did you see anything on? I haven't I, seen anything I about know that, he no. was. Uh, there were reports that he's being considered for the head coaching job with the Carolina Panthers, which is a horse of a different color uh, between a defensive coordinator and a head coaching job. But my initial reaction was to that was, well, that's you're kind of glossing over the, you know, pu- you're putting the cart before the horse. Burt Breer says that, uh, Gerard Mayo is still going to interview with the Panthers and that he's still interested in being a head coach and that there's still mutual interest in making that happen. So, you know, that that could be it right there. That could be the the thing that that topples all of this is that, yeah, well, you finally you finally decided we're going to give him a, a promotion. You finally decided we're going to give him, you know, a little bit more cachet and that we really value him and we want to keep him here and all that. And some other team says we want him to be our head coach. Top that. Top that, Patriots. Oh, you're not going to? Well, then, see you later, Gerard Mayo. And that makes this press release look really bad, doesn't it? That Patriots to extend Gerard Mayo. They released that about themselves. They said, we are going to do this. And if he gets an offer and they are being serious about it in Carolina, and it's not just the Rooney Rule thing, then I'm. why wouldn't he take it? Why wouldn't Gerard Mayo take a head coaching job? There's no earthly reason not to. <laughs> and that's the thing is people totally on the outside will look at this and say, well, you know, if he could get if he could get the New England Patriots coaching job in a couple years, none of that is a given. It's the same old song and dance that we heard yep. years ago with Josh McDaniels. And how about if, you know, to the second part of this, they're interviewing for offensive coordinator candidates beginning next week. What if Bill O'Brien comes in and Jonathan Kraft decides he wants Bill O'Brien, uh, you know, rooting role, Rooney role withstanding to be the de facto successor? And so then Drod Mayo hangs around here as an assistant head coach, associate head coach, defensive coordinator, whatever title they throw at him in order to extend him to stay here, quote, long term. And then you have Bill O'Brien coming in and he might be you might be fighting it out there. I'm sorry, but the way that the league goes right now, you're going to side with the offensive, uh, the offensive minded coach. Yeah. You know what else this sort of tells me is that after a season in which Bill Belichick went into it with no coordinators. No offensive coordinator. Titles don't really matter And here. no defensive coordinator and saying, we don't care about titles and none of that matters. The Crafts are saying, yes, we do. <laughs> yes, you know, we do You know what we about care that. about? Keeping good people here. Right. And bringing good people here. Because the the middle management fell apart this season. And we can't have it again. Yeah. And keeping them here, they're not going to stay if they're the linebackers coach or the assistant, whatever. They'll stay here if they're a coordinator. And if they think they can get a better deal somewhere else, they'll go somewhere else. And that doesn't just go for Gerard Mayo. That goes for anybody who may be interviewing for an offensive coordinator position, too. Uh, you come in here and you're the, you know, you're, you're looking at being the OC and you know that Bill Belichick just went a whole season without one. <laughs> you know, like, how's that? How's How do you think that dynamic's going to work? Like, he didn't want one. He didn't think that he needed one. And now he's kind of being forced to bring one in and interview for, for coordinator candidates. Do you think Bill wants to do this? Do, put this out? Do, do you think Bill wants to interview offensive coordinator candidates next week? Yes, I think he does. You do? I don't yes, know. Yes, I do. I mean, I do. <laughs> I think I think he went into that meeting with Kraft and said, "Hey, I don't no, think he wants work. to. I don't think he wants to broadcast that he's doing that. Publicly. I don't think he wants to be told that he has to do it. I think that's what it is. I think the Kraft told him you have to do this now. You have to keep Mayo and you have to get an offensive coordinator. And he said, "Fine." I well, think that, I think that's basically it. So we had Tommy Curran on the show yesterday, and he spoke about Gerard Mayo and how important it is to members of ownership to keep Gerard Mayo in town here and not lose another incredibly talented, well-respected assistant coach to somebody else in the league. I don't think the Patriots want him to leave at all. 
whether or not he's given that title a defensive coordinator, which a, in the past – the notion of making him a co-defensive coordinator has been broached. He didn't find that attractive because he didn't think that that was reflective of what was actually going on. So that's why he stayed as linebackers coach as opposed to any other title. Is just a defensive coordinator okay, or can you slap an associate head coach on there so mm-hmm. he can stop going into meetings or interviews and trying to explain just what level of expertise he has? I don't think the Patriots want him to leave. I don't think that ownership, based on my conversations over the past few years, would want him to leave. Um, I think there will be a great effort made to keep him here. Sounds like it. Sounds like they are making a great effort, but will it be enough? Will it be enough to say you can be the associate head coach, you can be the defensive coordinator, we'll give you all these titles, but you're not going to be the head coach. That's still Bill, and there's a team out there that's offering that. That's, I mean, listen, that's what it comes down to now. I'll say this. I don't think I've ever seen any team in any sport ever release a press release like this. Well, the Patriots certainly not. I don't think – like, can you remember any team saying we plan on bringing our coach back and we plan to interview coordinators next week? Like, I don't know. I don't ever remember a team doing that in the NFL. It's because of the disorganization. I think that they, that they really hate the way that it looks, mm. that there's no transparency. Like, we talked to Kern about this yesterday, that it's been – you know, just fighting narratives coming out of one side or the other out of Gillette. And everybody who is a season ticket member or just a huge fan of the team is looking at this going, what the hell is going to happen over the next couple weeks? Because the one advantage that you have to not be in the playoffs is being able to go and talk to coaches like Bill O'Brien ahead of the other teams who are still game planning week to week. Not a huge advantage, not like a huge silver lining (laughs) to look at missing the playoffs. But when you're trying to improve and you're trying to improve the personnel on your coaching staff, it is a big one. And if you're just sitting on your lore, like resting on your laurels or whatever, and you're not picking up the phone and calling Bill O'Brien and saying, we know you'd love to be back in Massachusetts. Why not coach with us again? Help us, you know, reestablish some trust with Mac Jones. So that's where it comes from to me. Yeah, I think you're right about that. And I think that, you know, this reads, this press release reads like they were listening to the show yesterday. You know, like how much do we talk about offensive coordinators and Gerard Mayo and all that sort of stuff? It addresses both of those things. And, you know, for the Patriots to be sort of trying to tide the fans over, right? Because that's what this is. I think the pay, I think the Crafts understand that maybe they're not losing the fan base. I think that's a little strong, but, you know, it might start to drop off a little bit. It might not be that same sort of hysteria down there in Foxborough that you had for 20 years because – for 20 years you had the greatest player ever and you were winning all these Super Bowls. Like, that's that's how that place got built, right? Like, you know, the old the old stadium used to be it's this little gonna, dumpy stadium. People are not going to come out for the big new lighthouse. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm right. sorry. It's just, it's not going to sell tickets. The Crafts oh, felt... Oh, my God. Look how tall, look how tall that lighthouse is. The Crafts felt like they had to appease the fans. And when's the last time that happened? When's the last time that the cra- that uh, the team in general ever felt like they had to put something out there to to smooth things over with their fan base? Like I, it's been a while, right? Like yeah. certainly since the Crafts took over, I can't I can't think of another time that something like this happened. So Maybe when you- Brady left, you know, Kraft came out and talked about it, but he didn't put out a release like this. What do you think of the time frame? So this, so we talked about the first part of this. The second part is equally strange. The team will begin interviewing for offensive coordinator candidates beginning next week. Okay, so like we're, we're just, just so you know, this is how the schedule is going. You know, like it, it feels almost like some kind of weirdo corporate job mm. where it's like uh, the, you're, you're at this point of the process. You've applied through Indeed.com <laughs> or something. Uh, but we're not doing anything until next week. So just stay put. I, I mean, the rest of the league is operating kind of like 24 hours a day. Yeah. Putting stuff out there, bringing guys in, flying guys in, flying guys out. And, okay, we'll start this month. We'll start this after the holiday. Yeah. Do we make it's Matt a long Patricia weekend. interview for the job that he just had all last year? Do they bring him in? Like, no. Oh, you, because you don't see saying, like an office space. Like well, what exactly? No, no, is no, no, no. Ryan, this here. is a big part of it. They're interviewing for offensive coordinators. I oh, think I'm the man for title. the job. Somebody that's going to get a title. Yeah. It's going to be a title offensive person. coordinator. And you like reading into that, you got to think, okay, they're not bringing Joe Schmo in here. Like they're not just going to, maybe they're not elevating Nick Kelly then because it, it feels like if he was somebody on staff like that, they wouldn't necessarily get the offensive coordinator position. It would be the same way that they handled McDaniels where they 
promoted him with the duties for a year yeah. before they gave him the title. Um, interviewing could mean interviewing people on the staff, I suppose. But, yeah, I think you're, I think you're probably right. I, I, when I read something like that, I tend to think outside of the organization. I tend to think, you know, we're bringing in people for interviews, and we're going to be doing that uh, starting right after the holiday weekend. So, you know, hopefully I mean, they all really, get hired before like, then. Like, okay, what's going on? Does somebody have a ski trip this weekend they can't cancel? I mean, seriously. Mardi Gras. <laughs> no, seriously. I don't, I don't think that's what it is. I'm trying to think. Mardi Gras in February. The, yeah, I the think, Catholic yeah. calendar. It's a little yeah. early for that. <laughs> Unfortunately. Um, anyways, yeah, I think that uh, that there's a lot of smoke here. There's a lot of smoke here for there not to be some kind of fire about uh, about what's happening and how it's all happening because whether you like this press release or you don't like the press release or whatever, we can all agree that Bill Belichick never in his life would ever have said, yeah, put out a press release like this. Yeah, I can confirm that. Yeah, there's no way that he was that this was his idea to to put this out there. There's no way that he may have like reluctantly said, yeah, fine, Robert, you own the team, do whatever you want here. But when they asked him, hey, what do you think about this? I'm sure he said, no, don't do that. <laughs> Remember, we, th- we had Tommy Curran in here yesterday talking about how Machiavellian the, the Patriots have been over the years, and it's really just been Bill. This was one of the least Machiavellian uh, press releases I've ever seen. They're like, we're going to do this, and then we're going to do this, and we really like this guy. It's like, Machiavelli didn't do that. He didn't tell you everything he was thinking. Like, that was the whole point of Machiavelli. He didn't know what he was going to do. What, uh, what would you say you do here? You know? I think I got probably one of the biggest plays in the fourth quarter in the history of the NFL where I think <laughs> I did a pretty good job. <laughs> I still that think was they tremendous. interview. That was tremendous. <laughs> Um, 617-779-7937. Well, look, I already told you. I think I got probably one of the biggest plays in the fourth quarter in the history of the NFL where I think I did a pretty good job. It was, it was me who intercepted that path. <laughs> I thought, of, Malcolm, go get it. I thought, hey, Malcolm, <laughs> when you see the ball, just run in front of the guy and just intercept it, okay? <laughs> Malcolm, go. Malcolm, go in there and intercept the ball. Oh, sorry, that was Brian Flores. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. It's a it's a very interesting situation here. This it's rare that a press release stops people in their tracks. It's almost as if they couldn't get somebody in the building to interview if they weren't coming to interview for the offensive coordinator. Oh, I got this bigger interview in Foxborough. What, what's it for? You know what? Great question. I don't know. Maybe I'm not going to go and do it. So, where did this press release come from last night? Out of the blue. Uh, We're going to have Andrew Callahan on in about half hour in studio with us. So tune into that. He had this to say on NBC Sports Boston on uh, Boston Sports Tonight late last night. I made a phone call and I was told that Bill and Kraft met today. They met yesterday. They met Tuesday. They met Monday and Sunday after the game. So my understanding is that, yes, the Crafts have nudged Bill into this. We're going to release a statement. We're going to talk about two of the three things. For me growing up, it was no politics, no religion, no money. Okay, for Bill, it's contracts, it's coaching titles, and game plans on game week. But they did two of those three things in two sentences. Obviously, this this was Crafts doing. I think his point was, A, if we're going to do this, Anyway, what is the harm in putting this out there? Do you want Gerard Mayo back or not? This statement should help us get there. And if you want him back, let's do this. Let's have some clarity. Let's do this my way. Because under your way, the last three years, we are 25 and 26. And ultimately, that eats into Bill's leverage. And he could put, you know, hit his button, the nuclear option of, we're going to do it my way or I'll leave. And that's just the, not the reality he lives in right now. So, first of all, they're meeting every single day. <laughs> all day, Bill every day. They're meeting every day to talk. If that's true, I, I would love to talk to, to Callahan more about that soon. Uh, if that's true, it's um, I guess there's a lot to suss out, which is kind of surprising because if you hear about how those two have collaborated in the past, it sounds like Bill's been kind of, you know, short with his words there. Dismissive. We haven't seen a lot of that. We only saw the 2009 documentary where he was going to hammer time on that salad and just blowing off Kraft, who was trying to talk to him about, like, the weather that day or something. I forget. But that's really the only time we as, a, you know, fan base, media, whatever, have ever seen those two really, you know, having a meeting of the minds. And it didn't seem like... Bill was particularly interested in anything that his boss had to say to him at that point, you know? And he knew the camera was there. He knew that this was all going to be in the documentary, more or less. And he was just like, meh, meh, kicking game. I don't know. That <laughs> <laughs> kid's wind. I don't know. What do you want from me? Get out of here, you bozo. <laughs> um, I thought that was, yeah, I mean, that's, that's, how, uh, that's how things were 13 years ago. Um, in the middle of that wasn't that wasn't the dynasty. I don't think that was 2009. They were removed from that. It was sort of in that in between period where they had those big, you know, Randy Moss teams that didn't win anything. Um, Bill was still riding pretty high at that point. I would say uh, it's a different time. It's a different Bill. It's a different Patriots. Like all all things are different. It's also now a in different media ecosystem. That too. In terms of getting your message out, 
And I tie this statement directly back to the weird uh, message that was out, put out there to season ticket members a couple days ago. Yes. <laughs> highlighting the new lighthouse uh, and other upgrades to Gillette Stadium and promising to present a better product. This doesn't smell like Robert to me. Jonathan? Doesn't it smell like Jonathan? I don't know. I, don't know. I, did. I feel like this is Jonathan's fingerprints all over it. This is like, so don't go anywhere, Gerard, please. Hey, fans, don't go anywhere. Look, we're being proactive. We're keeping we're keeping Gerard here, even though he hasn't agreed to anything. Right. We're putting out a headline that says that, knowing that it's going to be copied and pasted on Twitter like 400 times. How do they do that? Head- How do they get, like, no one if looked Gerard, at that headline and was like, guys. If you're Gerard, doesn't that kind of bother you? Yes, it is that There's a headline out there coming from the Patriots that says that they're extending you, and then in smaller print it says, They've begun discussions about extending right. you long term. And you're like, fellas, I'm going to interview for a head coaching job elsewhere. We haven't agreed on anything. And you're putting the headline out there. Do you know how many idiots only read the headline? Me. Trust me. I used to work for a newspaper. <laughs> Do you know how many idiots only read the headline? Like, if I'm Gerard, that bothers me. Yeah, well, I should. I saw a tweet, you know, right when this broke from Karen Garigian. What's up, girlfriend? And she's saying, per source, the Patriots are still working through, quote, some details with respect to Jaramillo's uh, contract extension. So while it's not done, it's getting closer. Do they put this press statement out just to kind of coerce him into like, hey, it's out. You'd probably look kind of foolish if you didn't sign on the dotted line, don't you think, Gerard? No, Maybe they, 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 yeah, look they look foolish. Gerard they look doesn't stupid. look foolish at all. Gerard, Gerard gets like, a head Gerard, coaching job, but, but their, their mentality foolish being a head coach somewhere else. No, I'm saying that's how the Patriots look. Of course, the I Patriots don't think look, so. look dumb as hell if, if Gerard Patriots, Mayo turns around and takes a head coaching position somewhere else. Patriots got over, got in a little ahead of their skis, and they're just trying to make it concise at the top, and nobody thought about how that looks. Yeah, that's true. Wait, I get, which again. If you're going to put out an unprecedented statement from Gillette and put it out that way, maybe like be on your P's and Q's. Yeah. Maybe not have a statement. The first part of the headline be a statement that's not even true yet. Uh, just a thought. Six and by seven. the way, after we all get back from Stowe and Vail, we're going to start interviewing yes. candidates. Once we're done hitting the slopes, <laughs> we're going to get right to it. I mean, I haven't seen any <laughs> indication that Gerard Mayo is not going to interview for the head coaching position in Carolina. He is going to interview for that. He might have said, told Cleveland, sorry, I, you know, I got uh, other things Bigger going on fish. here. I'm either going to be an associate head coach, whatever it is, or I'm going to be a head coach somewhere else. I'm not going to take these D.C. Uh, interviews anymore. And I think that's bad news for the Patriots. Again, if the only interviews he's going to take are head coaching interviews, even if there's only one, you know, you can't offer that. Patriots can't offer that. And I'm not even necessarily sure that they should. I don't know that Gerard Mayo would be a good head coach for this team and Mac well, that's, Jones. That's the other side of it. Is uh, Gerard Mayo's Q rating is through the roof. Sure. Players love him. And he, you know, is, was amazing as a media personality. He's very personable. He was good on that show. Yeah, yeah. he's great. And so he's very likable and everything. And has clearly done a great job year in and year out in whatever capacity he's been in with the defense. But that doesn't always all equate to head coach. No. So, yeah, like, I, I just can't sit here and say I know for sure he's going to be an amazing head coach. Nobody does. He hasn't done it before. Yeah. And these days, I feel like head coaches, the ones who get hired, aren't guys like Gerard Mayo. And I only mean that and then he's a defensive guy. Like, he's a defensive coordinator, linebacker coach. Like, head coaches now, I feel like, have to be offensive-minded. Or at least that's what's trendy. That's what sort of people want, especially with teams with young quarterbacks, right? You want someone who knows how to run, like, a, a offense, a newer offense, maybe. Yeah. A guy ran in college, something like that. Uh, and for the Patriots, obviously, I mean, you bring in an offensive coordinator and you hope for the best. But if Gerard Mayo is the head coach, that's sort of just another defensive-minded head coach, kind of like what Bill Belichick was. And I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if that whole if that whole thing is working for Mac right now. I don't know if that that whole structure is uh, is going for him. That being said, it doesn't matter because Gerard Mayo is not going to be the head coach here, right? Like he just he's not not right now. Uh, maybe he'll be assistant head coach and they'll make a decision somewhere down the road if he doesn't go to Carolina. But either way, the Patriots are very very thirsty for Gerard Mayo so much so that they are uh, well kind of lying in their press release. Like, that's <laughs> that's sort of that's where they're, we are. At this I would point. say they're massaging the facts. Yes, good way of putting it, massaging the facts.